So let's say your drivers park their commercial vehicles at their homes and then use those vehicles to commute to and from their local terminal each day. How should they log that commute time? Or what if your driver is detained at a receiver's facility for several hours while waiting to be unloaded and in the meantime runs out of available driving hours to proceed home? Can he or she log her subsequent drive time as off-duty personal conveyance? Hey, what's up everyone? Brandon here from Truck Safe Consulting. In this video, we're gonna tackle the prickly subject of personal conveyance and when commercial drivers can log driving time as off-duty. So stay tuned, and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date on all of our new DOT-related content. hundreds, maybe even thousands of safety regulations contained within the FMCSA safety regulations, there's nothing quite as amorphous as the concept of personal conveyance. So what exactly is it? Well, personal conveyance, for those unfamiliar with the concept altogether, refers to a scenario where a regulated driver operates a commercial motor vehicle, or CMV for short, for personal use. In other words, not at the direction of a motor carrier, in off-duty status, meaning that time is not counted against his or her available hours. In essence, personal conveyance is a limited exception to the requirement that all time spent at the operating controls of a commercial motor vehicle must be logged as driving time on the driver's record of duty status, or ELD. Now, as you might imagine, the idea of logging driving time as off-duty is fraught with the potential for misuse in order to conceal hours of service violations. For example, if a driver has reached his or her 11-hour driving limit, but is still 30 miles from, its de from his or her destination, there's certainly a temptation to flip over to off-duty personal conveyance status to complete the move. Now, with that in mind, you might think that the FMCSA has settled this in its safety regulations, but it really hasn't. In fact, personal conveyance is not addressed within the regulations themselves at all. So if you're looking for a definition of that term within the hours of service rules in Part 395 of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations, you're going to be disappointed. Instead, you have to look to the FMCSA's informal guidance, which doesn't carry the force of law but is generally understood as binding on the agency, to understand the concept and its bounds. Now, the agency's personal conveyance guidance has fluctuated over time, but currently states the following in question and answer format. So the question posed in the guidance is, under what circumstances may a driver operate a commercial motor vehicle as personal conveyance? And the FMCSA in response to that question answers as follows. A driver may record time operating a CMV for personal conveyance, for example, for personal use or reasons, as off-duty only when the driver is relieved from work and all responsibility for performing work by the motor carrier. The CMV may be used for personal conveyance even if it is laden, since the load is not being transported for the commercial benefit of the carrier at that time. Personal conveyance does not reduce a driver's or motor carrier's responsibility to operate a CMV safely. Motor carriers can establish personal conveyance limitations either within the scope of or more restrictive than this guidance, such as banning use of a CMV for personal conveyance purposes, imposing a distance limitation on personal conveyance, or prohibiting personal conveyance while the CMV is laden. So the agency's guidance makes clear that the key to personal conveyance is that the driver must be relieved from work and all responsibility for performing work by the motor carrier. Put differently, if a driver is operating a CMV at the direction of the motor carrier, for example, to have the vehicle serviced, or to enhance the operational readiness of the carrier for the next load, for example, bobtailing overnight towards the next shipper facility, the driver can't log that time as off-duty personal conveyance. Importantly, the current guidance clarifies that a driver is not necessarily disqualified from using personal conveyance if his or her vehicle is laden with cargo. Now, this is a departure from earlier versions of the guidance, which had said that a laden CMV could not be used for personal conveyance. 
Now, with that in mind, the circumstances under which a driver operating a laden CMV can legitimately claim off-duty personal conveyance status are certainly more limited. Now, obviously, the agency's guidance leaves the concept of personal conveyance open to interpretation in dozens of specific scenarios, such as those that I posed at the start of this video. To address this, the agency's guidance goes on to include some of the most common examples of moves that qualify and those that don't for personal conveyance status. According to the FMCSA, the following examples are permissible uses of off-duty personal conveyance status. Time spent traveling from a driver's in-route lodging, such as a motel or truck stop, to restaurants and entertainment facilities. Commuting between the driver's terminal and his or her residence, between trailer drop lots and the driver's residence, and between work sites and his or her residence. Now, in these scenarios, the commuting distance combined with the release from work and start to work times must allow the driver enough time to obtain the required restorative rest as to ensure that the driver is not fatigued. Additionally, time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to obtain required rest after loading or unloading, provided the time spent driving under this personal conveyance status must allow the driver adequate time to obtain the required rest in accordance with the minimum off-duty periods under Part 395, essentially a 10-hour off-duty break for property carrying drivers. And the resting location must be the first such location reasonably available. Another example of permissible use is moving a CMV at the request of a safety official during the driver's off-duty time, time spent traveling in a motor coach without passengers to in-route lodging such as a motel or truck stop, or to restaurants and entertainment facilities and back to the lodging. Now in this scenario, the driver of the motor coach can claim personal conveyance provided the driver is off-duty. Another example is time spent transporting personal property while off-duty and the authorized use of a CMV to travel home after working at an off-site location. Now, a couple of points worth noting here. First, although commute time is listed as an example of permissible, permissible personal conveyance use, it's limited to situations where the driver is commuting to or from his or her home and the carrier's terminal. Commute time does not include commuting from a driver's home directly to and from a shipper's or receiver's facility, which means that time has to be logged as driving time. Now, also, with respect to the authorized use of a CMV to travel home after working at an off-site location example, the FMCSA has clarified to me more than once that this example is limited to situations where a carrier itself has essentially set up an alternative base of operations for longer-term projects, such as a construction company working at a particular job site for months on end, in which case drivers can log their time spent commuting to and from that location as personal conveyance. In essence, the off-site location has become akin to the carrier's terminal in those situations. Importantly, this, this example does not authorize a driver to log time spent driving to or from a shipper's or receiver's facility as personal conveyance. Now, the only instance where it would be permissible for a driver to log driving time from a shipper's or receiver's facility after loading or unloading as off-duty personal conveyance is listed in the third example that we discussed, which is time spent traveling to a nearby reasonable safe location to obtain required rest. Now, importantly, even in those limited circumstances, the guidance clarifies that the driver must still have adequate time to obtain the required rest. Again, a full 10 hour off duty period for property carrying drivers or eight hours off duty for passengers, passenger carrying drivers, even when accounting for the additional personal conveyance driving time. OK, so moving on then to examples of driving time that wouldn't qualify as personal conveyance. The FMCSA's guidance lists the following examples. The movement of a CMV in order to enhance the operational readiness of a motor carrier, for example, bypassing available resting locations in order to get closer to the next loading or unloading point or other scheduled motor carrier destination. Situations where after delivering a towed unit, the towing unit no longer meets the definition of a CMV and the driver returns to the point of origin under the direction of the motor carrier to pick up another towed unit, that would not qualify. Continuation of a CMV trip in interstate commerce in order to fulfill a business purpose, including bobtailing or operating with an empty trailer in order to retrieve another load or repositioning a CMV at the direction of the motor carrier. Another example is time spent driving a passenger carrying CMV while passengers are on, are on board, time spent transporting a CMV to a facility to have vehicle maintenance performed, Situations where after being placed out of service for exceeding the maximum periods permitted under Part 395, the driver drives to a location to, ret 
to obtain required rest unless directed by an enforcement officer at the scene. And then another example is time spent traveling to a motor carrier's terminal after loading or unloading from a shipper or receiver, and then time spent operating a motor coach when luggage is stowed, the passengers have disembarked, and the driver has been directed to deliver the luggage. Now, lastly, it's important to understand that while the FMCSA's guidance makes clear that drivers and carriers are free to use personal conveyance in situations that qualify it, carriers are not compelled to allow drivers to do so. In other words, it's perfectly acceptable to, and many carriers do, require drivers to log all time operating a CMV as driving time rather than personal conveyance off duty. As an alternative, it's also acceptable for carriers to place limitations on the use of personal conveyance. For example, many carriers have written policies in place that are specific to personal conveyance. Some of those policies place a time or distance limitation on personal conveyance use. For example, no more than 30 minutes or 25 miles of personal conveyance use per day. Now, there are a number of reasons that carriers choose to place these types of restrictions or prohibit the use of personal conveyance altogether, including cutting down on the misuse of the status and the potential regulatory violations that stem from it, as well as minimizing highway accident exposure in situations where a driver is operating beyond the legal hours in personal conveyance status. Ultimately, it's up to each carrier whether and to what extent it will allow drivers to utilize personal conveyance status. In my personal opinion, if personal conveyance status is allowed, carriers would be well advised to place specific limits on its use in a written company policy. So to wrap up this video, personal conveyance has been a fairly ambiguous and controversial topic in the industry over the years. And although the FMCSA has tried to address that ambiguity through periodic revisions to its regulatory guidance on the topic, it remains a pretty gray area. Now, with that said, carriers should take care to study and understand the FMCSA's guidance on the topic and put some operational controls in place to ensure that drivers are not misusing the status. So with that said, if you have any specific questions about personal conveyance use or hours of service more broadly, feel free to contact me through our website at trucksafeconsulting.com, where you'll also find all kinds of educational materials on the types of topics, on these types of topics, including our ebook, which provides a very high level summary of all of the federal safety regulations. And if you're interested in, in even more in-depth training on these regulations, be sure to take a look at our innovative online courses over at trucksafeacademy.com. As always, thanks for watching.